<laughs> you got startled. <laughs> Hello, Spiff. Hi, Lettuce. Hello, Lore Master Andrew. Glad that you could make it. We have several more minutes before I actually start, so feel free to talk amongst yourselves or talk to me, whatever you like to do. <laughs> Sleepy Spiff. Oh, that didn't quite. Uh oh. No, that looks fine. Why is my reaction GIF not working? Oh. Hey. Where did I go? I've disappeared. Uh. Hang on. Cotton Eye Joe, right? I don't know where my reactive gift went. I may have disappeared, you guys. Wait, there I am. Huzzah! I have reappeared. I don't know what happened. But I have come back. Now, I don't know about you, but I had a long day at work. Da, 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 da. Just a few more minutes while we wait for any stragglers. Oh, sweet. I didn't realize that someone that I fought <laughs> did that else already snap in this timeline. <laughs> I just realized that um, someone that I recently followed not too long ago um, followed me back like five days ago. Interesting. Probably because he really liked my my um, uh, my username made of stitches. You need to go follow. I figured that if I get enough, um, if I get 50 followers, which I believe is enough to get me verified, um, I will try and invest in an actual avatar that moves when I speak and everything. I figured that would be a decent goal to have by, uh, you know, by my first anniversary. Come on. 
because I would probably have to commission someone to do it. I just don't have the time to do it myself. Otherwise, I would. Okay, again, lettuce. If I could, I would totally um, commission Honey Goblin to do um, mine. Either that or Chrisium. Because uh, Chris already has an otter. I know my PNG is very cute and I do love her. Anyway, we're going to turn that down because it is now 530. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. I'm slowly getting more people. Very slowly, but it is happening. And I think, you know, my one year anniversary isn't until like next August. So I have time. <laughs> Definitely have time. Time for more spoopy stuff with Black Book. I say spoopy, but it's really not that scary, to be honest. Come on. You can do it. Okay, there we go. Everything's going a little bit slow for like the last two weeks or so. Probably from the the cold that we experienced. It wasn't even that bad though. You hear the lingering sounds of songs long known to you. At one of the Izbas, you see a late running Vichorka. It may be worth stopping to listen for a while. I wanna say that I listened to this last you time, but sure. House and dissolve in a deep song. I'm pretty sure I've already listened to this, but I'm still always getting kind of some awe at the the sheer, you know, it's just so pretty. So that's where I'm at. It's the fair. Uh, we we'll go to Pochka Village. Life goes on as usual in the sleepy Pakcha village. The peasants have returned from their work and fill the village with hearth fire glimmers shining from tall windows. The shop is still open. The peasants answer your questions with enthusiasm when they learn that you are the knower matchmaker they have heard of. According to the villagers of Pakcha, <laughs> they seldom encounter wonders in their mundane life. Everyone laughs at the men who were brewing beer. Supposedly, they were so carried away with their work that they saw the devil himself. Oh dear, oh dear. You <laughs> whisper a prayer and catch your breath. Okay, so didn't really need to visit the the church. What does the merchant have? Words off thieves and curses alike. All restrictions, curse status. Don't really need any of those to be honest. Wake during a wake to protect the deceased. Is ailment on the enemy. Attack pages deal one extra damage more when you have less than 50%. Eh, I'm gonna leave that for now. You easily find the home of the peasants who brewed beer, but their izba looks empty. You look into the galbets and see a man who is putting crosses on vials and barrels. He jumps when you call out to him. Gotcha. Christ almighty, what are you scaring me for? I nearly died. 
I knocked, didn't you hear? I'm here about the wedding. They asked to bring beer. We couldn't cook the beer to the end, you understand? The bride is a chort in disguise. Everyone knows that. So some of them sharp-tailed visited us. We barely managed to escape. With God's help, I'll bless the ingredients. We managed to brew the mash, then added hops to the cauldron. Everything with God's words. Everything proper. A pound of hops and a pound of malt. And then the demon showed up. Lord of mercy. Tell me about the demon you saw. Someone cursed us. That must be it. Looked like a lump of meat that kept glaring at us. So we ran. Left everything there. We prepared part of it, but we're too scared to go there now. So they were basically scared off by Super Meat Boy. So you brewed everything by the book? Everything as it should be with prayers and according to the recipe. First, the girls came to us from the bride's side. Tried to put out the fire. Then, later, closer to the evening, a man came along. And at nightfall, it all began. The bride's cursed. So the devil showed up. What man? I don't know. Didn't have the chance to look at him proper. He stood for some time in the distance and then left. Did you brew by the river? Right. Wait, you're going there now? This late? You'll be killed. I think I'll be okay. It's all right. I have God's word with me. The devil will have to retreat. Well, God be with you. Go to the east of the last Isba. You won't miss it. Time to go. All right, I don't think I've missed anything. So off we go. <coughs> you sleepy, sleepy spiff. Well, I found the beer pot. It's quiet in the brewing area. Too quiet. You anxiously look around. Evil spirits definitely had something to do with this. Well, I see. Nope, go back. I want the herb. Thank you. There's some sparkly. I guess those are like um, Here's fireflies. Here's where the mash was cooked. There's some left at the bottom. This is where they light the fire for brewing beer. Uh, I don't want to light it just yet. This cauldron is full of partially brewed beer. You feel an evil force hiding beneath the black surface. Before I do that, herb. Thank you. What's this? Ah, dry grass. There's some dry grass around here. It can be used for kindling. You take some dry grass. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna light a fire under their butts. Here is the firewood that the brewers prepared. You take some firewood. Here are some barrels filled with beer that's already been brewed. I think that if I'm able to chase the evil spirits away, the brewers will be able to take it. Sounds fair. This is where they light the fire for brewing beer. You put some dry grass under the cauldron. Now it will be easier to light the fire. You add some firewood. Now you can light the fire. I should probably save first. <laughs> uh, it's like, always gotta be careful. You light the fire and take a step back. Spirit shows itself above the cauldron for a moment, but it soon disappears beneath the oily froth of the beer. The fire is extinguished by the spilled beer. Could a larger fire expel the chorp? This cauldron is full of partially brewed. You roll back your sleeve and thrust your hand into the cauldron, but after a moment, jerk it out with a scream. Something bit you. Okay, perhaps that wasn't the smartest idea. There's some dry grass around here. It some can be grass. used for kindling. Oh, never mind. So I apparently need more logs. Here is the firewood that the brewer. You take a greater amount of firewood. 
<clears throat> Let's try again. This is where they light the fire for brewing Yes, yes, beer. yes. You add even more firewood. Now the fire will burn brighter than ever. You light the fire and take a step back. <clears throat> oh, snap! Oh. Uh, yeah, I'd be scared of that, too. You're a curse. <laughs> Out for the curse of the beer. Hey, what do you have? Immunity to waste. Does not ban it. Duration. Flesh armor. Okay. So I'm going to have to do like other damage for this one. It's nothing that I have will really help in this case. to have Prushka help me with this one. Yeah. It's like, do I have a time limit for this one? Because if I do, I didn't know. I didn't see it. Here's waste. Okay, so he he gives it's like he uh does waste. That might help. Composure. Oh, oh. Hello, Ty. Welcome, welcome. You, I'm fighting against the beer demon. <laughs> Thurston? I'm still doing pretty good on health. This one doesn't seem to have like a, um, oh, what's the word? A, uh, mm, time limit. There we go. Looks more like a blob demon. I mean, it kind of is. When they described it earlier, there was like, you know, a, you know, a lump of meat with eyes. And I was like, so they're scared by, um, super meat boy. This looks nothing like Super Meat Boy. Ah, uh, and the noise that it makes, man. Ugh. I have to watch out, because I have like 25 waste.
Do I have anything? Adam's head. Crying iron. Well, that didn't help. Ugh. That was a waste. Biblically accurate angel, but it doesn't have any wings. I don't know if I'm going to survive this one. Ugh! It, just, it keeps hitting me with a waste. I'm not going to survive. I don't think I'm going to survive this particular battle. at the moment so it wouldn't do anything. Yep. <sighs> Alright, let's restart that battle. Beer curse, that's what it's called. Is the beer curse. some you lose some. This game is actually a little bit harder than one might think. <laughs> Curse. Uh, some regeneration. And I'll have Grushka help. biggest issue is that waste uh, status. I don't have a lot that can combat that. Ooh, it removes negative status. Yay! 
That one card removes, like, removed my, the waste status from me. Apparently I need to, it's like, apparently I need to add more of that particular card to my deck. if I, my stuff did better damage. This one. Right, I want to get rid of this one. Let's see, this one is probably. This is what I have in my thing. Got it. Okay, um... Right out of that. I need more cursed. I need more curses. Do I have any more curses? Curses. I have one more. It was like, I only have two curses. St. George. Do I have more Salamandia? Swipe removes page from the book until the end of battle. Increases curse each turn. That might be helpful.
Piped Tooth, Mermaid's Cross, Red Thread, and the Thunder Arrow. Rokopi Staff, Strengthens Ward Status. Prayer. Unity to Curse. I can, uh, I have skill points. Heck yeah! Ages deal one more damage. Go ahead and learn that. Alright, let's try and see if this helps a little bit more, better. Demons. That actually would be really helpful. Okay, there we go, there we go. Every time my health goes down, my, um, uh, my defense strengthens. be helpful. <sighs> Realize it had already used its um, defense. Bowie. Break herbs. The problem with the curse and the waste is that they ignore defense.
Oh, come on. Really? <laughs> the thing is that um, the spells are all um, random, so I don't know what's going to show up in my next uh, move. going down, Super Meat Boy. Status. Generation. Snake, welcome. Fighting against a, a beer curse. And I am admittedly not doing all that great, but I'm trying. should have brought someone else uh, with me instead of Broshka. I like having Broshka, but uh, perhaps he's not the best for this particular um, battle. Uh, I define winning. <laughs> I spuckled Sparrow, welcome. Curse is living daylights out. Yeah. I'll have Broshka help. Oof. Ouch. Freaking. Uh. Okay. Um. Royal eyes. Curse. Death to demons. Oh, yes, please. That removes the negative status effect. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. That was close. Almost died again. It still didn't remove the, uh, it still didn't remove the waste. I'm gonna die like immediately. 
How do I get rid of you? I'm gonna like barely survive this next one. He still has his, um... Man, why did they have to make this... I was like, why did they have to make this guy so... Such a tank? I have 12 health left. Uh, I wish I had something that um, protected me against the waste status. There's no way. I'm not gonna survive. This is it, guys. I might have to switch out my um, battle partner. Yep. <sighs> okay. Um. <laughs> Items. Can I switch out my partner right now? I might have to go back to, um... I will not be able to go back. Uh... Move the beer curse. Yeah, I know. Oh, here we go. Um... Oh, I can't remove, um, Broshka right now. I'm stuck with Broshka. I mean, Broshka's cool and all, but... I don't think he's really helpful with this one. Uh. Okay. So what do I have that I can use? Choose a page and add an effect. The enemy dies, inflict seven damage to the remaining enemies. That's not helpful. George the Brave. Plus seven to all, increases the attack of each page for seven. Cat is cool, but not dying is better. <laughs> well, I can't remove him right now, so. Does not vanish. Amplifies effect by one for every other page of the same color. George the Brave, that's an order. Remove Gria. Apparently I can't use this one. Don't know why. Perhaps I need some more uh, ones with bless. Brothers. Doubled if there's an enemy status with curse. Herbs deals twice the amount of damage if against an enemy curse. Yeah. No, the only thing that I do have that even, you know, is like that even helps with waste is a uh, Salamandia. Um, but the problem is, is that A, the cards are random. So I don't know when it's going to show up. And, uh... And two, there's a chance that it won't remove the waste aspect, but rather a different, um, one. So the, the, re the negative status that it removes is also completely random. <laughs> but I can add another Salamandia. 
so that might help. The other, uh, and the third thing that makes this um, one difficult is that he has a status where he can basically bulk up and, um, and block all of my attacks. Um, no, I'm not gonna skip the battle. I'm not going to wimp out. I love RNG. <laughs> Okay, do I have... Uh, I don't have any curse right now. Booey. In which case, it's kind of useless. So this first turn's like a freebie. He doesn't, it's like he doesn't have his thing up right now. And, yep, okay, so that flesh armor brings his defense up to 38 and none of the stuff that I have would be strong enough to break through that on the first try so what I have instead is a break herb I can only use one herb per turn just bless Ah, here we go. Curse, and then use that. Uh, move negative status effect. The thing about the, the waste part is that um, waste takes out uh, your, your health, um, ignoring your defense. And decomposure adds more waste at the start of the turn. So the longer we fight, the worse this is gonna get. So I gotta end it as quickly as I can, which is harder than it looks. Another status. I think that one removed just the decompose, but it didn't remove the waste. Pestilence. Acquired food, commenced devouring. <laughs> oh yeah, compounding what yeah, now you see why <laughs> like why this one's a difficult one. We're still doing okay on health, for now. I think we're finally starting to get somewhere though, however slowly. I'm gonna have to take out that flesh armor.
If I don't get this one, I may have to actually do the whole skip this battle thing, as much as it sucks. Salamandia, please take out the waste! Removes negative status. Yes, please. The curse falls to the ground as a repulsive ball of foul smelling wool. This chort was created by a Kaldun. <laughs> but who would wish harm upon Nikolai? You send the brewers for the intact beer barrels and return to the Izba. Hi, kitty. Different kitty. I think he wants out. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta let the cat out real quick. From Bakcha after I chased away the chort. I'm coming, I'm coming. He's yelling at me. There you go. Beautiful. The beauty of, of wireless headphones. I can just get up and do what I need to do. They took the barrels with the cooked beer. Everything that was left in the cauldron was gone. Ah, so much good beer wasted. Looks like what a shame. Got involved. Looks like it. Well, they're lucky to have you as a matchmaker. <laughs> Set up the reverse jinx. I have to skip the fight. <laughs> You also keep your eyes peeled around, Nikolai. Who knows? I will. Many Kaldun's like to ruin weddings. You know how it is. Yes, and the guests are helpless. If you ruin a wedding, you can ruin the entire lives of the newlyweds. That's all right. Just be attentive. You will protect them. Right. I shouldn't expect any help from Petka. We'll manage even without Petka. All right, <laughs> we need to go. Okay, looks like my, some of my chorts are done pestering. That's completed. <sighs> Great. <laughs> Go to the center. <laughs> hey man, I am purposefully sending them on jobs that I think that they would do awful at, and they're still succeeding! Gosh dang it! Job, meaningless job. Ganidor, try if no other. Allison, uh, you there. Need. You are a fire. Go there. Unfortunately, I only have like two meaningless jobs that I can send them on. The rest I have to just kind of guess. Uh, no, too good. Animals. You go there. Where's the game set? Um, yes, yeah, so this is set in Russia. Um,. I can't really tell you the exact time frame, um, but my guess would be about turn of the century, perhaps. It's actually really interesting because it also gives you some like 
I was like, um, let's see. You have like, you know, your stories, you have your encyclopedia, which kind of shows you everything. Um, and it kind of gives you like a really nice short, uh, brief history lesson uh, about certain things that you come across. And it's really interesting. Uh, let's see. Terre de Nuyest was located in the northern part of Perm, Gurbania. Uh, Finno-Ergic reliefs were closely interwoven with those of Christianity, creating a unique cultural blend. First trade route from Europe to Asia passed through Cherdin, transforming every river, creek, mountain, and hill into a part of European and Asian history. But yeah, it, this is really cool. You kind of missed a lot, though, uh, if only because, you know, it's a longer game. I started this back in October um, because I thought it looked creepy enough. Coldoon Soul. It's heavy with sin, so it is unable to rise to heaven. To make things easier, the ceiling and roof above the deceased are dismantled, the prime moon is cut, and the stove is opened. But even then, the sin-burdened soul is unable to cross the border between worlds. Oftentimes, an aspen stake is driven through a Coldoon's heart, or his spine is severed between the third and fourth vertebrae. This is done to prevent the soul's return to the body and additional harm to include. Um, so a cold dune is what they call a witch. And it could be a male or a female. Eh, okay, I don't think I've seen this one yet. The word for witch, Vedma, takes its root from the word Vedat, to know, or to have some degree of knowledge. Vedma is traditionally a woman, first in the knowing and performing of magic. They were often called uh, Vikshitsa, from Veshka or squirrel. It's a phonetic distortion of the world of the word Veshitsa. You have to look up the wiki, <laughs> yeah. According to Cherudin mythological text, such a woman could turn into a squirrel, allowing her to enter a house through the chimney and steal an unborn child from an expectant mother. And some of these are actually um, useful for the game itself, because there are some places where, uh, you know, these stories might have you, uh, was like, might have something that you need. Oh, here we are. This one I hadn't read yet, because I was busy. Nowhere matchmaker. Koduns are always invited to weddings as the best man. In our village, Koduns were also matchmakers. One time, the parents of a groom set their neighbor to ask for a bride's hand. He went there at midnight, taking care to walk through vegetable patches. If anyone noticed him walking over, the wedding was sure to fail. The moment anyone learned of a wedding, they put the evil eye on it. There would be a family, but no happiness in the day-to-day -day life. Koldun protected the wedding from curses and the evil eye. He also knew to avoid saying too many words, and only Koldun's knew the right words. He knocked on the door, and the host lets him in. He sat on the bench by the door and put his mitten in the corner, even though it was summer. The girl's parents immediately took the hint and put their daughter behind the stove. The Koldun sat behind the table and said, We have a ram, you have a ewe. Should we bring them together? The parents refused, even though they were willing. They refused a second time, and even a third time. Then the Koljun realized he had not asked for permission to enter, but stepped across the main beam regardless. He walked backwards out the door, taking his mitten with him, and knocked again. The second time, he did everything properly. The parents agreed, and the wedding took place the next month. Please tell me we can turn in, like, turn into a squirrel game would be 10-10. I don't know. Um, I do know that... So far, um, Vasilisa is able to breathe underwater, apparently. Let's see, we have two visitors, Proshka. Uh, right, I need to switch out. Can I switch out? I want to... Uh, map? No? I guess I can't switch out um, Proshka right now. God bless Vasilisa Fyodorovna. Friend God of the bless. bride. Bride sent for you. She doesn't let anyone touch the banya. Says you are the only one who can. That's right. Tell her I'll be there soon. Get the decorations ready. All right. I'm going then. And I will go to the Nikolaevs to help prepare their procession. I'll be with the guests this evening. Be on the lookout. 
Don't forget about demons while you're looking out for Kaldun's. Who knows who's mixed up into this? All right, Grandpa. And we have another visitor. Greetings, Vasilisa Fyodorovna. I've fallen ill. A fever of sorts. Look, my arms are all withered. The day is near when I won't be able to hold a plow. What did you expect? Weren't you the one last year who got drunk, climbed the Church of the Trinity, and knocked down a bell from there, eh? <laughs> yes, Yegor Yevlampovich. It was I. I come to you for repentance. Vasilisa Fyodorovna, heal me, please. All right, I'll do something about it. One doesn't deserve to die because of this. Here, sit by the stove. You whisper several healing zagalers, and the visitor feels better. At least that brought my sin count down by like oh, one. Thank you, mistress. I won't squander this chance. Okay. The bride's courtyard. Something or some lamenting should be done before the bride's banya ritual. It's proper to decorate the banya with ribbons and birch branches. I also just really like how pretty this whole game is. And the characters themselves, like, eh. Thank you for coming, Vasya. I've been crying the whole night. I have no strength left. That's how it is. If you want a good marriage, you have to wail a bit. I know, I know. But it's not that simple. I won't miss the Abdiri for much. This way you'll get a taste of grief and cry, but your marriage life will be sweet. Yes, we need to go to the Banya soon. Decorate it properly. No one knows these rituals better than you. All right, go cry about your hair. You can comment without me. Go cry about your hair. <laughs> I will leave you a red ribbon. No need, I'll manage. Thank you, Vasya. I'll go then. Well, to decorate it properly, I need to place birches along the path and tie ribbons around the Banya. Time to get to work. Hey then. Here are the decorations for the banya. Satin ribbons of different colors. You take the ribbons from the chest. Herb. Question levels of logic. They really love their suffering. I See, before I played this, I actually didn't know a whole lot about Russian um, mythology or even just how they were in general. The old Banya reminds you of the Abdiricha. You chase away these gloomy thoughts. There's no need to go beneath the bench here. You're just decorating the walls. Before I do that... Dawn? I just wanted to see what they're saying. What they want ah, to say. What a beautiful dawn we have in our old yest. Is there anything over here that I need? Herb? Aha! Hey, got some Peter's Cross. Anything over here? Oh, right. Uh, these are the birch. Yeah. Some birch branches, birch branches. Lie here. Let's go ahead and place those. Very nice turned out pretty beautiful. It will also keep the bride safe. Let's decorate the, the banya. The old banya reminds you of the Abdiricha. You chase away these... You are thinking about what color to decorate the banya. Um... Strange barrel. The barrel jumps from side to side and sways, as if it were alive. A small boy is sitting in the barrel. He clutches a flute in his hands and blows it with all his might. Well, witch! Today, Petka the Witch Hunter will expel you from this wedding. <laughs> witch Hunter? Stop blowing the flute! I'm here to help the bride! Right, because if I believe you, 
the boy starts to torture his flute in a severe manner. Oh man, before there was recorders, there was this guy. If he doesn't stop playing, my head will explode. I can bring him around, and the Kaldoons can help too. What was it that the bride and groom appointed me? Matchmaker. I did the matchmaking of the bride from the bandit. You think I saved her to curse her wedding? All right, all right. I believe you. I heard that the Kaldoons curse weddings. I'm here to protect it. And torture his flute indeed, right? <laughs> what have you heard about Kaldoons? Do Kaldoons fight each other? One invites a Kaldoon over. Then he turns out to be weak, like you. Hey! What are you whispering there? Nothing, nothing. So then comes another Kaldoon, a powerful one, and curses everything he sees, the wedding and the first Kaldoon. Have you heard about Bannocks here? I have. They grab the curse and flay their skin. And the bride lived with them, they say. Is she an evil spirit too? Technically, she's not. No, she was rescued. So, a powerful Kaldun helped her? Yes, I went with the groom. You? You wouldn't manage without a groom, I bet. Alright, this kid needs to leave. I did not go through that entire point of the story for him to tell me that I didn't say that I did, you know. I mean, yeah, Nikolai helped me, but I did most of the work. So, you think I can manage? Will you help me to guard this wedding? I can. Together, we can do it for sure. Defeat the Kuldoons. I don't believe I think I don't believe this guy. I think he's a Kuldoon. It's time for me to lead the bride to the banya. I'll look after you, witch. Let's deal with it peacefully, all right? I don't trust you, sir. After the preparations, <laughs> I are made, wish I could smack it's him. Time to accompany the bride <laughs> to the banya. A crowd of people has gathered to watch the ritual. Everyone wants to hear the wailings of all and have a look at the decorations. You sweep the road in front of the bride so that no cursed items will be trodden upon. Agreed, his flute is a powerful curse. I'm just listening to the music. That's, uh... Oh, I got a new herb. Oh, this one grants bless. Very nice, very nice. Wedding protection. The border between worlds is open during a wedding, so it becomes important to protect the wedding from curses and the evil eye. This was the task of the Kuldun, who often served as the groom's best man. He protected the wedding cortege on his way to and from the village, and prevented the interference of any evil Kuldun's. The rite concluded on the second day of feasting. During it, men usually acted out a mock christening and a mock wedding. Okay, okay. Did I miss something in here? I already read that, so I guess not. Oh, whoops. Alright, to the banya. You warn the bride that guests from her side might show up soon. Chorts sent by the Abdiricha. You're right. As soon as the fire is lit in the banya, a demon appears. Gotta fight the demons? All enemies. These are pretty, um... These aren't super strong. Nice. Ouch. 
much. I managed to block that particular one, at least. I'm honestly not too worried about the waste here. Uh, let's take out... Wait, no. I want to take out you. Yeah, our friend Waste is back indeed. But there we go. Take two pages. Page effect amplifies for one. Increases ward. Plus three for every idle short. I don't have any idle shorts, so I'll go with this one. <laughs> After you catch your breath, you wash the bride while speaking the ritual Zagavers, and then help to get her in the wedding dress. Yay! Arrival of the bridal uh, procession. Guests should arrive soon. We'll all go to Vilgort for the ceremony together. Carts with wedding guests have already started to arrive at the yard. There will be a wedding gathering this evening, so there's going to be quite a crowd. Nikolai is here, as well as old Yegor, the master of ceremonies, and the groom's relatives. The moment the guests enter the yard, the mother of the bride brings her daughter out. Duke! Matriona. Jesus, so many people. <laughs> well, we came, yes, so greet your guests. No wind and then a gale. No guests and then a swarm. Greetings, Igor Yevlampovich, Master of Ceremonies. Howdy! Soon we'll make you completely human. <laughs> Greetings, noble best man, my loyal friend. Well, as they say in Sherdan, bonjour! <laughs> I don't think that's what they said, buddy. Greetings, betrothed. Greetings. See, I'll fulfill my promise very soon. Oh well, the evening won't start by itself. Time to drink for the bride. Don't go ahead of the cart. When the master of ceremonies tells us to, then we will start. Come on, you're too ceremonial. They do everything quicker in the city. Uh, buddy, considering that I saved you from being hung because you were too dumb to not go into a house that was clearly abandoned and play for a bunch of demons. I don't have anything to say to you, man. Right. You're lucky to and be the alive. Will lose what's left of their soul soon. See we'll the start French part of Russia. <laughs> as it's supposed to be started. Oh, Jesus Christ. Don't be angry, Vasilisa Fyodor. Igor Yevlampich, it will be as you say. Unharness the horses and get ready for dinner. And I need to speak to you, matchmaker. As you say, Igor Ivlampovich, as you say, come here, everyone. Could you be a bit quicker, old man? Come, come. You'll get what you're due soon enough. Okay. I can talk to other people real quick. Hey, Kola, prepare your coins. We have a song for you. Hey, hit it! Petka, let's pet some drums! New song? your typical bride. The others usually say goodbye to their home. I learned about this only recently. You had a chance to see it. Not every cursed one has that chance. That's right. But you'll help me if something goes wrong? I didn't save you from a demon for nothing. Thank you, Vaisa. I do like Matriona. There's something back here. Caldeans hey. often throw in a pod with nine peas to prevent horses from passing. You search the haystack, but don't feel any cursed artifacts nearby. Awesome. No, I don't want to talk to Igor yet. So talk to the bride's mother. Turns out to be. For so many years, I've been raising a log 
And my daughter was suffering from demons. Might I remind you, lady, that you're the one who threw her away in the first place? Oh, Jesus Christ. How did it happen? Forgive me, Lord. Your child wasn't growing. So why didn't you visit a nowhere? I called a doctor, and he said that it's a kind of a scientific disease. All diseases come from demons. Why have you listening to doctors? Be glad that Nikolai got to us. Oh, I don't even know how to thank you, Elisa Fyodorovna. My daughter will do well with such a matchmaker. Are you happy with the groom? Oh, we couldn't hope for better. Practical, has served in the army. What more could you wish for? Your daughter is an enviable bride. I myself couldn't have brought her up better. Lord, forgive me, but how could you say that she grew up with demons? No one would believe it. And such a dowry. Even I got a belt, just like my daughter's. I don't know who sent it, though. Uh-oh. I have a feeling I know where that belt came from. Well, Miss Elisa, we've been <laughs> Dang quacks in their science. Wait a little bit. This beast will get pretty fiery soon. Petka? Petka, how are you doing after that night? Hmm. Oh, I don't quite remember what happened, Vaisa. I only know one thing. If it wasn't for you, the feast would have been my last. I won't forget it. It turns out you're like a mother to everyone here. <sighs> Everything is quiet at the moment. There are no Kuldoons around except for you and old Igor. I'm keeping my eyes open. If I notice any chores, I'll tell you. Chores? Better. Regular people don't see them. Wrong. Anyone can see a chore today. Have you heard about the carts with no horses? Who moves them if not chores? <laughs> is he talking about cars? <laughs> well, I know that chores spin the grindstones. Uh-huh. And who's pushing a cart if there are no cattle? Chorts! Who else? And then, there's another thing. The locomotive, for instance. <laughs> so he's talking about cars. Oh, oh, and have you heard about Pelegraph? Recently in Solicams, the Pelegraph chorts made such a ruckus. For the telegraph? The peasants pulled down Pelegraph. It's a sort of nobility that they have a Pele... the... graph. They cut Pele the graph. I heard something about Pelly the Graf. Be on the lookout. Pelly the Graf himself may show up. Oh boy. If there's any cursed wool in the bride's way, it will bring bad luck. If it's bare wool, the procession might not be able to pass at all. You inspect the floor, but you don't notice any cursed artifacts. Why? Anything else? No? I think we can talk to Igor. I already looked at the floor. What you got to say, man? How can you live with this friend of yours? I just don't get it. He's alright. <laughs> A funny guy. Anyway, I want to speak to you about something else. <laughs> Back we in my to day. Guard this wedding. Notice anything? Right. Instead of Petka. But no, everything seems proper. Keep your eyes open. Don't give any curse a chance to settle. Have you sensed anything wrong? The horses were reluctant to go when the procession was leaving the gates. I whispered a bit, and it sort of improved. But these things don't happen without reason. <laughs> Back in my day... We didn't have any cattle or horses to pull the wagons. We did it ourselves. Good times, old man. It's all about short power now. <laughs> right. Why don't you have a look? Maybe with your powers of sorcery, you'll be able to find something. I don't think any Kaldoons will show up. They're scared of you. Have been for a long time now. Could be. Hmm. So we won't sound the alarm yet, right? Besides, What's a good wedding without a Kaldun duel? <laughs> a little bit of drama. But nothing like a good duel for a wedding. There was this event in my youth. Uh, I was the best man and uh, guarded the wedding. A disgruntled Kaldun showed up. 
They hadn't invited him, you see? So I gave him a good cursing. He was sick for an entire week after that. Kids with your dang charts and stuff. We don't want you to be sick. So we have a new Bashalishka. Yeah, I guess did you teach her accordion player any words? I did, I did. And he whispered them correctly. I hope he doesn't mix anything up. What could he possibly mix up? I'll look after him. Talk to you later, Grandpa. I'll have a look around. Remember how I taught you to spoil weddings? Of course I do. Well, try to find some wool or bean sprouts. You need to dispose of them if some short left them behind. All right, Grandpa. Oh, let's take another look around. If there's any cursed wool in the bride's way, it was... Okay, no, nope, that's still the same. Khaldun's often throw in a pod with nine peas to prevent horse... Nope, nope. Oh, but I can leave the location. Oops. Uh... Right, there was a new Bashaliska. Filth at a wedding. There was once a Khaldun who served as the best man at a wedding. He guessed all the riddles they posed him. The priest had already performed the blessings, and the couple began to walk over their guests. However, there was some kind of filth at their feet. Khaldun wiped away at once and asked the couple to walk backwards to the priest. Only then did he allow them to join their guests. Filth is a kind of evil eye. In Russian, the words filth and quarrel sound similar to one another. He realized that there was an evil Khaldun among the guests who hoped to spoil the wedding. At the wedding feast, he noticed a Khaldun from another village. He lifted him up and made him stand on one leg while the others celebrated. The dog of a man, the evil Khaldun whined for mercy. Let me go, for God's sake. Don't shame me. The best man answered, <laughs> the best man answered him, let this be a lesson to you. Which is in the fir trees. Oh, this is the one we missed earlier. thing that they've uh, added so far. <laughs> All the other ones are really slow and kind of creepy. <laughs> Neat. Is this an actual song or not? I think it's supposed to be, or at least it was modeled after uh, an actual song. Uh, well, I've already checked the floor and everything. I don't think... You may go on your way. The table in the upper room is prepared for the evening gathering today. Tomorrow is the wedding day. Finally, after the prolonged greetings of the foreign guests, the ritual of drinking to the bride begins. The bride brings wine to everyone, and the guests sit in the traditional order. A dinner is served that consists of many dishes. 
jellied minced meat, meat soup, fish pie, and calf's head. These are only a tiny portion of all the dishes served. The whole week before the wedding, the bridesmaids and the bride were preparing wailings of grief. Now it's time for songs of praise and glory. Before continuing the feast, you decide to stretch your legs and walk into a decorated room. The neighbors of this tall carpenter are lying face down on their plates, snoring peacefully. Do you think I bored them with my talking? Oh no, <laughs> that's not the case. In all of Pernguberne, there is no man more dashing than me. Well, if it's about carpentry or drinking, anyway. In all the rest, I'm afraid I'm not that good. So your axe feeds you? Yeah, I recently put a blockhouse in Anbor. I'm often hired in this, so yes. If only I was paid as well as I should. I can build whatever you can think of. A boat or a church. My tool is always with me. My loyal axe here. So no one can beat you at drinking. I can drink five bottles of vodka right now. Believe it or not. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to take that bet. <laughs> and she has the blackest book. And her eyes. A true Satan. She looked at me and I sort of froze. She wanted to set her short on me. <laughs> and I'm standing right behind him. But then I told her, I'll hit you so hard. What did you tell me? Oh, sweet mother. Oh, Jesus. It's uh -huh. me who's going to hit you hard. Or should I send my short on you? Oh, Vasa, don't curse him. He was a fool. Don't be strict with him. He used to tease me too when I was with Proshka. Oh, it's Akalina. So she's the first person we saved, and the reason why we have Froshka is because he was haunting her. Either they are asking that they're a carpenter, or they're, um, what's the word? A lumberjack, I guess? Maybe. I don't know. I know that you're good. You should be called a witch doctor. Akalina? Was it you who I cured of Ikota? It was me, Vasilisa. Thank you, mistress. This chort has no business sitting as an Ikota. She's looking a lot better. Roshka is doing good now. He's traveling with me. So, he's helping you. We knew it would turn out so well. This is my friend, Pyotr. He's very good with his flute. Well, it is what it is. If you tell any more stories like that about me, you won't have any limbs to hold that flute. Got it? <laughs> Got it. Uh-huh. So, how are you doing without Proshka? Oh, I couldn't be happier. The chort doesn't speak from inside me in a scary voice, and the other children don't make fun of me anymore. Thank you, Vasya. How's your patrol doing? Noticed any more Kaldoons? Uh, everything's quiet. I'm on the lookout. Uh-huh. Do you like the wedding? Oh, it's pretty. And the songs. And everyone is dressed so nicely. <laughs> That's rubbish. But Nikolai's uniform looks great. I bet he has a gun at home. Of course you'd be interested in when the gun. When I grow up, I'll cry my eyes out, and then I'll live happily. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's so cute. Uh, <laughs> you're such a sweetheart, Akalina. Please don't marry Pyotr. Vasilisa Fyodorovna, God be with you. I know I didn't believe you outright, but I was wrong. Oh, thank you, Vasilisa Fyodorovna. I don't know how to thank you. Take some sour cream from our cow. Oh, it was a lucky day when we met you. Cool. Oh, Vasilisa, the bride told us about you. Such a man she got herself, right? Hush! Do you want to curse her? Me? I can't curse. Here, Vasya will prove me right, right? But what a man, a soldier. Maybe I should get dragged away by shorts? No, you do not want that. <laughs> Thank you for helping me. I understand that you got this friend quite suddenly. That's all right. She's a fine girl. Feel like we've known her all these years. Oh, it's a pity she didn't show up earlier. Aren't you afraid that the bride used to be a changeling? <laughs> Chase Peter. <laughs> Chase Peter out of the village. Don't marry him, Aquilina. What's there to be scared about? She's ordinary now. Things happen in life. It wasn't her decision to become a demon. Such was her fate. The only one to blame here is her mother. Oh, she's also suffered her fill with the changeling. God is forgiving. 
I kind of like this. I like this one. There's a little bit of effy on that one, though. She better stay away from Nikolai. The feast is not yet over, but it will not continue on without your approval. Is there anything else that I missed? I don't think there is. I think I've talked to everyone. With the exception. Yeah. The feast is not yet over, but it will not continue. These people are really easy going, I know, right? The feast continues, and each of the guests is honored with a song of glorification. After each song, it is customary to thank the singers with some money. Your turn comes. The song begins, When the sound of the choir dies down, a girl with a tray approaches you. I'll be generous. The eyes of the performers grow wide with surprise. Your generosity is momentarily praised in a song. At the end of the feast, a ritual dish is served. Selyanka, a large baked pudding with eggs. Nikolai deftly cuts a piece of pie and gifts his mother-in-law the customary coins. The feast will go on until morning, but old Yegor convinces you that tomorrow is the most important day. The traveling of the wedding procession to the wedding ceremony. You go home to have a little rest before dawn. All right then. Hydrate and posture check. All right, let me send these guys out. Um, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna take a short break, and we'll be right back.
was a good stretch. Add a sip of water. Then I managed to find the mango moscato. <laughs> so, so I have a small glass of wine as well. One visitor. Let's just continue, I guess. God bless Yegor Yevlampovich, Vasilisa Fyodorovna. I came for you, Vasilisa. I'll get you to Pokcha. And you, Yegor Yevlampovich, will get to Vilgor. Get ready. I wait for you at the gate. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Before we continue, I should probably save. It's been a hot minute. Okay, let us uh, let us set off. Farewell to beauty. The wedding day starts with a long ceremony. You reach the bride's izba with the light of dawn. The changeling girl sits under the icons and starts a long ritual of saying farewell to the maidenly headband. The bridesmaids chant, Ujjasyaduka Maladyoshin. The bride hands out red satin ribbons to everyone. The bride gives the prettiest one to you. Aww. The ritual drags on, and the guests have yet to arrive. The sounds of the last wailings quiet down close to the evening. The bridesmaids begin dressing the bride in the wedding gown, and you decide to look once more for cursed items in the yard while waiting for the guests. Let's do it. You go down into the yard. It looks empty and grim without wedding guests. Not surprising. This roof was home to an evil spirit for many years. You jump from a sudden rustling. You think you heard it coming from one of the haystacks. But which one? There was some noise coming from this haystack. Or was it that haystack? Two dark figures emerge from the shadows. The kids. Got a witch. Oh, it's Vasilisa. This isn't a fairy tale. What if I took you for an evil spirit? Sorry, Vasa. We were trying to ambush an evil Kaldun, not you. Someone has been here for sure. We've been watching all night and saw it. He sneaked in and planted an ikota on the wedding. Oh, Christ in heaven, not an ikota. <laughs> Peter, we better not see your face. It's all right. <laughs> I'll protect you. Kaldun's have no business cursing weddings. What Kaldun did you see? He sneaked in at night. Satan himself, I swear by God. The gates opened by themselves, and the other seals were flying around. It means shorts were moving it. And he himself didn't look like a Kaldun. He was dressed as a townsperson. He started to whisper. It was so fast and so frightening. <laughs> Dang it, so Peter. Dark, we almost couldn't see anything. He likely won't find it by herself. Stop whistling. This flute must be good against the Kildoons. So he ran, and we decided to change our hiding spot in case he'd be back. And you came. What did that Kildoon do? He whispered a lot and did something with his ants. I think he was scattering cursed items. We'll help you find them, Vasa. She likely won't find it by herself. I got my eye on you, Piotr. All right. If you want to help, go right ahead. Petka, look in this haystack for a peapot with nine peas. You, Akulina, look in that haystack, and I'll search the yard. All clear? Clear. He likely won't find it without us. All right, Vasilisa. Beer. Leftovers from yesterday. The chest contains snowy white bed sheets for the newlyweds. They must be given to the house of the groom once you go to the izba. You closely inspect the floor. To your horror, you find a patch of burned dog hair. You remove it with a zagavr and throw it away in disgust. 
Good thing we checked. Suddenly calls out to you. Basa, Basa, I found it, I think. I too found some traces of the curse. You and I both have some. That's a lot. What do you have, Aquilina? Oh, <gasps> well, it doesn't matter if you don't have any. I found some Basa, also a pod. Quite a few curses. <laughs> Powerful Kuldun is involved here. The children look at each other worrisomely. Give me those pods. Who knows what else is our enemy capable of? Curse? Will he summon Chorts? Mortal threat. You jump from the sudden knock at the gates. The children run inside <laughs> the house, screaming. Open the gates. Foreign merchants have arrived. Demand the ransom. Uh. Hang on. What does it say? Consider taboo not to invite a Kuldun to a wedding. It was akin to not inviting close or distant relatives. People were afraid of Kuldun's and generally did not want to take the risk. If by chance or for some other reason a Kuldun was not invited, there was a good reason to fear the consequences. This fear is well depicted in the painting A Sorcerer Comes to a Peasant Wedding by the Russian painter Vasily Maximov, a member of the uh, Parades of... I can't say that group. <laughs> It was believed that there were many magical ways to spoil a wedding. For instance, a Kuldun could set newlyweds against each other, or put a spell on the guests as a prank, or with evil intent. Interesting. After several minutes of bargaining, you open the gates. Go get your bride upstairs. I need to speak to the master of ceremonies. You seem alarmed, Vasilisa. I found so many cursed things right now. Someone powerful is trying to curse this wedding. You tell old Yegor about your discoveries. You can stop the wedding now. But why? Wait, I'll tell Nikolai. Old Yegor forcefully grabs your arm. Hold there. Do you want to spoil their wedding? If you stop the procession right now, their whole life could go sideways. Yes, but what if we're stopped in our way down the aisle? No one knows how all these curses turn out. That's your task, Matchmaker, to guard the procession against it. If it stops, then yes, only God knows what will happen. Don't bother the betrothed. Do your job, and I will do mine. We'll teach Fetchka some Zagovars. He may learn something yet. All right, Grandpa. <laughs> Let's go. We need to bless them on their way. Was that Aquilina gave us some cursed items, but Peter... No, Peter found... Um, it's like Peter found something that he gave to us. All the guests gather in the Izba. After the blessings of Nikolai and his bride, the procession departs to Vilgort, to the Church of the Trinity. Yeah, both Aquilina and Piotr found something. Sure is lucky, right? <sighs> yes, you can return from another world. She wouldn't have done it by herself. We helped her. So is the case with the other dead. They can't get back by themselves. So Koya wouldn't pull her out without you, right? Without me or Grandpa, unlikely. You know, I've been thinking. In a way, he also pulled me out from the grave. If you didn't come that night to the pothouse, Shirts would have killed me. Yes, I think that's how it happened. I've heard what the girls in Bingar have been saying, that you didn't want to become a witch. But you did become one, right? And so I've been thinking, you did it to help your betrothed. Why would you think that? You and your grandpa are taking me for a fall, but I see lots of things. He's the first one to actually say that. <laughs> a dead man can go back by themselves, right? I visited lots of evening gatherings. I saw how much you loved him. 
So I think you decide. Vasa, stop this nonsense. Nothing good will come of it. <clears throat> you brought back that girl, but she never died. She was kidnapped, right? I was quite close to being dead, but she betrayed. Is dead. Very. Quit running your mouth. You don't understand anything. Wait, don't be angry. I'm not joking. I came close to seeing the afterlife. There is no coming back from there. And your chores constantly beg you for work, right? So how many people have you cursed already? N not so many. What's next? Sooner or later, they'll get hungrier and hungrier and start dragging our souls to the grave. I've listened closely to many stories. Your chores will also drag you to hell, along with who knows how many peasants. I mean, he's not really wrong. You may be right. The chorts constantly ask for work. If I give them some slack, they'll ruin everything they see. But what else can I do? You're saying my chorts will be the death of me. You can know my fate, and you don't know his fate. That's right. I don't. But I decided to make my own fate. You have your fate. You heard the Troika. So that's your fate. Maybe it wasn't a trick. But I have a different fate. You remember how I stole from the shop? It wasn't the first time. I've done lots of similar things. I think maybe I should quit this kind of life. Start a household. I know it's not as fun or exciting. You saved me. So I wanted to ask your advice. You were nowhere after all. What do you think? Well, Petka, I've always told you to abandon your life of pleasure. Right, I'll try. All <laughs> habits die hard. Next thing you'll know, I have my own household. You better remember these words of yours. I will. I'm not old enough to have a bad memory. Fedka grins and flings the reins. Mm -hmm. Pakcha village is surrounded by mist, and the road to Vilgut lies ahead of you. You think that if someone wanted this wedding ruined, he wouldn't be stopped this easily. You look around anxiously and prepare for the worst. Cold Creek Road. The spring crosses the road. It would be easy to stop the procession here. <laughs> the winding path lures you in with a damp mist and mysterious shadows. What spirits hide behind them? Soon, you get to Cold Creek Ford. Yours and the bride's carts cross the water with a splash, but the third cart isn't so lucky. One of the wheels hits a stone and all its passengers fall overboard. Uh-oh. You look around and notice demon eyes in the dark. Fedka gives you a questioning look. What should you do with the rest of the guests? You hold the horses and give a lift to several nimble guests. The older and slower ones are lost in the mist. Oh, whoops. Behind your back, you hear human screams and demons croaking in the mist. You can't tell what has become of the guests left behind. Uh, whoops. I feel kind of bad now. I didn't mean to leave them all off. The wedding train reaches the shadows of the gloomy trees of the crooked forest. Strange sounds escape the evening darkness. It appears the mysterious Khaldun cursed this road as well. Your suspicions prove correct. Although you have known this forest since you were a child, the road meets a fork that you have no memory of. Looks like the turn on the right is used more often than the one to the left. Um. Hmm. Another fork. To the left of you, the forest parts. And to the right, the road loops back around. The road stops at a wide glade. While the wedding procession is turning around, you have some time to gather some healing herbs. Another fork. To the left of you, the forest parts. And to the right, the road loops back around. Your suspicions prove correct. Although you have known this forest since you were a child, the road meets a fork that you have no memory of. You don't recognize the last fork either. 
The road to the left looks like it's submerged in darkness, and you see some moonlight above the road to the right. You arrive at another fork. The road to the left lies through a thick forest, and to the right you see a clearing amongst the trees. Finally, the forest is behind you. Vilgert is close, so you decide to take a break. Okay. Whew. Managed to get out of that one without too much of an issue. Ah, the crossroads. Mikhail's crossroads look unfamiliar. You feel as if you have entirely lost your sense of direction. Back to you work. Can't tell north from south. It's as if you are standing at this crossroads for the first time. You decide to resort to sorcery. You quickly whisper the words of the Zagabur and listen. Sounds of an axe from the right and a mournful wailing ahead. What word do you take? Sorcery. Mythological and pagan worldviews view of the future as predetermined by destiny. This is why one could glimpse the future from divinations. During calendar holidays, when the borders between worlds grow thin, sorcery was considered to be especially effective. In a place of transition, such as a crossroads, sorcery might become even more reliable. Thus, at a crossroads at night, during Yuletide divinations, one could hear hints regarding the future. The sounds of a woodcutter's axe told of a coffin death was constructing while the sound of the jingling of bells told of a fast approaching wedding. So that's the answer. We need to go with the way of the bells. So sound of bells from the you left. You chose the right way. You make no mistake in choosing the road. This task is right down your alley. The road to Vilgert passes by uneventfully and you have a chance to rest. Looks like this is the last piece of the road to the Church of the Trinity. Yay! Almost to the church. Uh oh. Vasilisa, stop the procession! Alexander! We can't! It's a bad omen! Alexander's the witch! I suppose I can hide it now. No time to argue! I intend to curse your wedding procession, and I'm willing to see it through. What? Are you telling me that everything you do is based on science? I can leave it be, but only if you give me the book. But why do you need to ruin the wedding? It's simple. I can take this artifact only if you're sufficiently weakened. If the procession stops, the curse may splash out. Only God knows what should happen then. Right. You're only saying this so I wouldn't interfere. No such thing will happen. And yet... Listen to me! This is dangerous! Very dangerous! You can't scare me, Vasilisa! Either give me the book, or the procession stops! So that's how it is in your world! Always plain pretend! You could have helped me with the snake that time! I wanted to, but... You were doing fine on your own, and I wanted to see what kind of witch you were! I did! I think you're as powerful as me. I don't want to hurt anyone. I just need the book. You know about this? What do you need it for? What are you planning? Don't stall, Vasilisa. Fight me. <laughs> fight me. Listen. Let me wed this couple and then we can fight. Why involve the bride and groom? You won't trick me, Vasilisa. I came especially prepared for this fight. Now when there's a curse around us, we are equal. Well... Guess I need to save. All right, guys, here we I go. I can't give you the book. You know that. Then it's the only way. Defend Sua. Defend yourself. It's time to do 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 Oh, 
Time for the dueling carriages. Vasilisa, and the guests will be safe. They have nothing to fear. I'll protect the wedding. Yeah. Maybe not, but I'm hoping that, um, I'm hoping that this means that there's not going to be a, uh, the word um a time limit because some battles um require you to finish them within a certain number of um of uh turns it doesn't look like i have a time limit on this one but you never know damage absorption That'll be helpful. Take out his other friend. And we'll have some regeneration. That'll be helpful. The good thing is that if I defeat him, the other two will die anyway. break herb to take away his huh? I guess not. Never mind. It's toils. Summons more spirits. To the void deny removes all negative statuses. Okay. Even if I curse him, it doesn't last very long. Where did all my attacks up the first go?
I don't have to. You've been lying like the devil himself, and now you want me to believe you? I mean, she's got a point. So, game, when do we get an attack card, right? I was like, where did all my black zuckle letters go? Hey, there we go. They were just waiting. provide us with some should be able to take him out with this one oh well, maybe not but we're very close You're going down, buddy. I know the driver's been taking this really well. Hey, I guess I win. Automatically. Why not? Mushroom bread. Healing herbs. Restore seven for each herb used. Nice. Salt in the eye. Choose a page in the book and add a gesture. Yeah. I go for mushroom bread. Oh, I've gained another demon. <laughs> Great. Alexander's driver notices that his master is weakened and strikes the horses. The carriage drives away. With horror, you realize that his last Zagavers weren't directed at you, but at the procession. The horses lose their footing, and the first carts overturn with a terrible crash. Oh, the snap. world around you turns into a cacophony of screams, both animal and human. Uh-oh. That's not good. Uh, we're gonna have to Alexander's go after them, aren't we? Hits the weakened wedding procession and slices through it. Some of the wedding guests turn into wolves and run into the forest. Others have lost consciousness or are injured from the crash. You notice old Yegor and run towards him. Several Zagavars later, and your mentor comes to his senses. Grandpa! Grandpa, you're alive? Wishilisa! Oh, Jesus, my head hurts. Wait, I'll whisper a bit. No time. Uh, what's happened to the procession? Was it cursed after all? Yes. Many of the guests were turned to wolves. So they were. I wasn't seeing straight. I saw how Fedka was turning. Oh, get that, Alexander. Oh, but what should we do now? Shush. Don't whine. There's no time to think about that lad now. First, we fix the wedding. That's all right. You'll catch the wolves and heal them. Next thing you know, the seal will be broken. How will I find them? Even my chords may not be able to find the cursed. We'll find them. I have this old friend of mine, a hunter. He will track them, find out who's missing, and fix up the wounded. Then we'll get ready for the road. How did they turn into wolves? No one has heard of such thing for a hundred years or more. Well, your friend there cast a strong curse. 
And then you were right. Kechka is not very knowledgeable for a best man. How do I lift the curse? You need special herb. Cuckoo's tears. It grows deep in the forest, in the Leshe's domain. I think this hunter of mine will give you a hand with the herb as well. Okay, Sparrow, no worries. I'm actually about to end pretty soon because I've gone over a little bit than I usually do. So feet got turned also? Yes, there is his accordion. At first I thought I was seeing things. What do we do with the bride and groom now? They'll manage. I'll teach them a couple of secret prayers. Who's that friend of yours? Just a hunter. I'll tell you at home. Oh, Akulina. Your friend, the Ikotnitsa, is lying here. Akulina has lost consciousness. It seems the girl is hurt. Akulina comes to her senses and with difficulty stands on her feet. Oh, Vasya, have you healed me? Akulina, you're alive. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. She's going to be all right now. Akulina. Have you noticed where the wolves went? I haven't. I don't remember anything since I fell. <laughs> I can't see Piotr anywhere. He must have been turned too. I know, Snake, but it's past my usual time to stop. Your mother will bring you home. Rest there. All right, Vasya. Grab an herb while I'm at it. Yay. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and save and stop for today. Well, it just means that you'll have to come by next Thursday. Actually, it'll be the Thursday after next since I switch between, uh, I switch between games. The next, like, uh, next Thursday will be, um, more Evo Land, And then the Thursday after I will be more Black Book. But we did, it was like, we did a pretty good job uh, today getting through a good portion of the story. Like, sometimes it doesn't always end up that way, and I end up having to try and go against a boss, like, seven times in a row. Uh, I see, I see. It will be the last time you see me for the year, that's true, that's true. Unless I, like, you know, suddenly decide to do a surprise stream beforehand. <laughs> but if I do, I'll let you know. No problem, Snake, no problem. <laughs> you miss me already. Uh, let's see. Uh, Abigail is currently um, streaming. Let's see about reading Abby. Raffle. All right, we're gonna raid Abigail. All right, and I will see you guys when I see you next. Huzzah and happy new year.